Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you are very welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, this is the seventh webinar in uh, this series uh, from uh, Estonia Europe. And my name is uh, Adam Kalinowski. I'm the president of Estonia Europe. Uh, Estonia Europe is a pan-European umbrella organization for the national Estonia associations uh, in Europe. And part of our mission is to provide the Estonia community uh, with the latest information about Estonia. Uh, that's why uh, in 2020, we launched this series of webinars uh, to give you the opportunity to learn more about uh, Estonia related topics and ask questions to specialists. Uh, today we have a, a very specific topic. Uh, we will focus on the focal dystonia type uh, called uh, writer's cramp. Uh, so I'm not wasting your time anymore. And I'm going to hand over now for a few opening remarks to Edwish Ponsel, the Estonia Europe Vice President. And Edwish also introduce you to our great panelist. Enjoy our webinar. Edwish? Yes, thanks, Adam. So I'm Edwish, uh, uh, the Estonia Europe Vice President, and I'm a Vice President of French Organization. Uh, so I'm glad to introduce two French specialists today, Professor Marie Vidalie from the PTA Salpetriere Hospital in Paris, Professor of Neurology, and Dr. Jean-Pierre Bleton, Rehabilitation Specialist from Rothschild Foundation in Paris, is a doctor in science of human movement. <laughs> So you know them as authorities uh, in this Tanya field. So um, I'm sure we will uh, learn a lot of things about uh, uh, writer crumbs. And uh, I wish you all uh, a great session. Professor Vitae? Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to be with you, especially uh, on uh, behalf of Amatis and in Europe. Uh, I must express my gratitude. Uh, to uh, Jean-Pierre Breton. Uh, I've been working uh, with him with delight and uh, for a long, long time. And I learned a lot from his uh, expertise and also from uh, uh, everything that he's doing, uh, watching him, uh, learning from him, working with him. It's a great pleasure. So I think he will share this pleasure today. And that's something that is uh, really a privilege. Jean-Pierre, the floor is to you. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Marie. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar devoted to rehabilitation of writer scrum. First of all, I want to thank uh, Distant Europe, in particular, Monica Benson and Adam Galinowski, and Amadis, the French Distant Society, in particular, Edwish Ponsel for giving me the opportunity to present the rehabilitation of writer's cramp. I particularly appreciate that Professor Marie Vidaille, for whom I have a deep respect and a sincere friendship has accepted to moderate uh, this session. Writer's cramp was originally described by the English neurologist Sir Charles Bell, who observed that some clerks had difficulty writing, even though they could use their hand effectively in other activities, such as fencing. This condition is known as waiter squad. It affects more particularly those who write a lot. Dr. Albert Schweitzer, Nobel Peace Prize winner, is one of the famous personalities who suffered from the, the writer's cramp. Yet, he could play the, the organ. My presentation will be divided into three parts. Firstly, the clinical evaluation, then the rehabilitation training program, and finally, the potential outcomes. 
let's start the clinical evaluation of whiter scrap. The scientific term mojigraphia is rarely used. That of writer scramp is generally employed. Writer scramp is classified as a task specific dystonia because it especially affects the writing gesture while other hand gestures are performed without difficulty. Similar impairment may interfere with the use of musical instrument in musician cramp or keyboarding in typist cramp. The complexity of the movements of the hand, those of the upper limb, explain the great variety of clinical presentation. The motor function is not only affected. The writer scrap also disturbs the sensitive perception of the writing gesture. The psychological consequences of the degradation of writing are also frequent. Regarding the motor evaluation, the evaluation focuses on on gesture and on pen hold during writing. The analysis of the writing corpus is subsidiary. It is only a reflection of the manual difficulty. The rehabilitation training is established from a specific assessment, which include the posture, the handwriting movement, the seated position in front of the table, and also the position in front of the paper. The actions similar to writing, which cause the same difficulties, such as applying makeup or keyboarding, need also to be evaluated. Fingers on hand movement are evaluated during drawing of broken lines, spirals, on loops drawn clockwise or anticlockwise. You will find here different presentations. A form involving the wall upper limb from the hand to the shoulder. A form with radial flexion of the wrist. A form involving all the extrinsic muscles of the finger, the long muscles. And more particularly, the muscle of the index fingers. All the muscle, but uh, the index uh, seems to be uh, very involved. On the form, reflection of the second phalanx of the sum, form name hammer thumb. Once the dystonia has started, the dystonic gesture occurs whenever the patient writes manually. This permanence of the dystonia is illustrated in this example where the patient exhibits dystonic pronation, uh, excuse me, where the patient exhibits dystonic pronation while writing in both European script from the left to the right and Arabic from the right to the left. For the same finger, the muscles involved can be different from one patient to the other. This difference between the involved muscles is essential, obviously, for the neurologist injector, 
and for the physical therapist in the choice of the corrective muscular exercises. In this first case, it is the extrinsic dystonic muscle that gives the hooked finger attitude. In the second case, it is of the extensor muscle that extend the index finger. The dystonic disorder is apparent as soon as the patient intends to write. Even before holding the pen, this confirms the disorganization in the brain of the motor program of writing. Let's see the dystonic flexor muscle of the finger. The more they flex, the more their turn increases, looking the finger in flexion. This phenomenon is called shortening reaction. It is typical of dystonic disorders. One of the characteristics of dystonic muscle is that uh, they are activated when writing with the writing hand, here and here, but also when writing with the opposite hand, here and here. This phenomenon highlights their overactivity. The complex form of writer's cramp called dystonic form is characterized by a dystonic manifestation occurring during manual writing but also during gesture out of the context of writing. In this example, the patient is suffering from a thumb flexion during both handwriting and keyboarding. The quantitative analysis make it possible to objectify the difficulties and to follow the progress achieved. It consists in counting the number of, of letters written in one minute, assessing the pressure of the finger on the body of the pen on the pressure of the pen on the paper. The subscore of the Berg, Fan, and Marsden scale quantifies the quality of the legibility. Second part the modalities of the rehabilitation training program. The rehabilitation of writer cramp is not a new concept. Since its initial description by Charles Bell, many rehabilitation approaches have been proposed. We can mention the use of electricity, Duchenne uh, de, de Boulogne, corrective exercise, Brissot, Mege, reinforcement of the corrective muscle, Quinji. None of many, uh, many ingenious writing devices have been uh, invented in order to facilitate handwriting, none of which has proven to be truly effective. More recently, the neuropsychiatrist Deagiria Guerra has shown the interest of relaxation. Shortly after, the behaviorists have successfully used EMG biofeedback device, which allows the recording of the muscular activity of the involved muscle and its restitution in visual and or sound signals. Thus, the patient was able to control the muscular activity during the writing gesture. 
currently, many rehabilitative approaches are used and evaluated in writer scrum with a different degree of validity. Nowadays, the rehabilitation training is often combined with botulinum toxin injection. The aim of the injection is to reduce the hyperactivity of the dystonic muscles. I, I won't describe the, the injection in my presentation. And the rehabilitation training to correct the, patholo the pathological gesture. In the next slide, I will present you different points to consider in order to organize a rehabilitation training program. The progression consists, first of all, in obtaining a relaxation of the writing limb, then a mastery of the finger movement before considering a pictographic re-education, which will make it possible to find a normalized writing gesture. The first recommendation consists in recalling the judicious advice of the neurologist Henri Mege, write little, slow, round, wide, and straight. Indeed, write little because it has been shown that there is a close link between the quantity of daily writing and the occurrence of writer's cramp. Cursive writing is better adapted to the coordination of the gesture than script writing, which is more jerky. The rehabilitation training is organized according to the specific dystonic movement of each patient. In this case, the handwriting is disturbed by a pronation movement of the forearm. Rehabilitation exercises aim at developing a well-conducted supination movement with the least possible effort. The selectivity exercises aim at obtaining a better independence of the fingers. In particular, the first three finger, the thumb, the four fingers, and the middle finger, which are particularly involved in the writing gesture. Dr. Sabine Meunier and contributors showed that the finger representation in the sensory motor cortex of patient with white scrump differ from that of people without white scrump. The perfect alignment of the finger was disturbed in people suffering from white scrump. The search of manual dexterity, selectivity of the action of each finger, on the coordinated handling of the pen prepares the correction of the writing gesture. The pressure exerted on the body of the pen is very often excessive. So the agility of the dynamic movement of the finger is replaced by a tonic contraction, freezing the natural movement of the finger during writing. The study we conducted showed that patients with writer's cramp underestimate the force they were producing. This observation justified the interest of practicing 
existing relaxation of the writing name. This uh, short movie shows the quick overview of the rehabilitation program from an ex excessive pressure of the dystonic long flexor of the sum. The rehabilitation exercise training start by the flexion extension movement of the sum. Then goes progressively to correct the writing gesture, pencil in hand. A fast writing gesture does not allow voluntary correction on the motor disorder when writing. This patient present uncontrollable clonic jerk during fast writing. Which disappear during slow writing. This characteristic must be taken into account in rehabilitation. It is advisable to avoid involving the dystonic muscles in the writing gesture and reduce their harmful action. I will illustrate this approach of rehabilitation in the following examples. First examples. This patient used a long finger muscle, named the extrinsic muscle, with excessive force. By lengthening her finger, she used her small muscles of the hand, named the intrinsic muscles, which drastically reduces her difficulty. Second example, the contact of the fingertips on the body of the pen stimulates the dystonic reaction in some patient. You can see the wrist flexion, the dystonic wrist flexion. The characteristic pen hole between the sum on the little finger, known as the dagger hold, makes it possible not to place the finger on the body of the pen. This greatly reduces the dystonic reaction. In this third case, the effectiveness of the dagger grip is immediately apparent. As soon as the patient's finger are on the body of the pen, the dystonia appears. As soon as they are removed, it disappears. After practicing at home, the patient can modify the relationship between writing and dystonic reaction and can hope to resume writing with a more academic pen hold. Nevertheless, in the case presented here, the rapid writing generates chronic jerks, which were probably the origin of his writer's cramp. In order to encapsulate the rehabilitation training program, 
I present here an example of patient suffering from a mild dystonia localized on the wrist. This uh, joint lacks extension when writing. The prepar preparation of the writing movement. In order to stimulate uh, the extension of the wrist, the physiotherapy program focuses on the recovery of the extension when writing. In uh, this presented case, the result was a complete recovery of the handwriting skill. In summary, the step of rehabilitation training consists in correcting the motor control of the finger, pen in hand, outside the context of writing, reducing by self-control the excessive pressure of the finger on the pen, for example, by writing eyes closed in order to focus the attention of the sensory inputs, and progressively, introducing manual writing by carrying out pictographic activities in a clockwise and anticlockwise direction to train the tracing of letter before retrieving the writing gesture. The therapeutic pens currently proposed do not seem to be more effective than the form more writing devices. If no one devices has shown a real efficiency, the most suitable tool for practicing rehabilitation exercises is long facet wooden pencil. Pencil on pens with a cylindrical body tend to rotate under the finger pressure. Other rehabilitative approaches, other way of rehabilitation are proposed, such as immobilizing the non-dystonic finger to constrain the activation of the dystonic finger or fingers, or proprioceptive stimulation by means of vibration. Other, like Dr. Priori, cast the hand to immobilize it, and then resume the, re the education of writing gesture. Other, stimulate the cutaneous sensory information by reading in Braille. Last part, what results can be expected from the practice of rehabilitation? The main objective is to improve the pen hold on the writing gesture to make them functional and comfortable. By correcting the gesture, the volume of writing increases. As well as the legibility, even though in this very severe case. Writing volume, legibility, and comfort of the writing gesture were improved after one year of rehabilitation in this student. In this teacher case, it is the graphic that has been improved after eight months of rehabilitation. The study that we conducted with Dr. Sabine Monnier, Professor Marie Vidayet, and contributors showed that the rehabilitated patient presented the same organization of the finger 
that the non-affected control subject, why the non-rehabilitated patients were characterized by a disorganization of this representation. This study tends to prove the beneficial influence of rehabilitation on brain plasticity. In another study that we conducted with Professor Vidaye and Professor Touze, and involving 305 patients who had undergone a rehabilitation program, it appeared that patients with writer's cramp affecting the wrist on the forearm in particular responded better to rehabilitation than those with writer's cramp affecting the finger of the ulnar side of the hand, finger three, four, and five. In case of failure of the rehabilitation training program on injection of botulinum toxin, it could be recommended to use a computer or in a lesser extent to wear an orthosis, but it's not, it's a so so, not very perfect, or to use an adapted pen. The use of the opposite hand stays the last option because the primary objective is to recover the use of the writing hand and not to immediately look for escape the condition by means of compensation. Before ending my presentation and answering question, I would like to thank all those with whom I have had the opportunity to collaborate, either in the clinical or the research field. Dr. Sophie Sangla, Dr. Raphael Portero, Professor Marie Vidaye, Dr. Pierre Gedinac, Dr. Serge Mesur, Professor David Grabli, Professor Emmanuel Touze, Dr. Pavel Lindberg, with a particular thought for those who left us, Dr. Laurence Salomon and Professor Pierre Rondeau. Thank you for your attention. Please feel free to ask questions you may have on the subject deal with. Professor Marie Vidaye and I will be pleased to try to answer them. Thank you, Jean-Pierre, for this uh, very uh, thoughtful and uh, um, full of experience. Uh, lecture and also very didactic because we have a lot of clues in your in your lecture and uh, it answered a uh, few questions that were in the chat. So um, we have different questions. Maybe we can get directly to the one on the chat because people are online and then we go back to the ones that we received on um, on uh, uh, preview. So uh, one question which is very difficult, I think, is do you think that there is an evidence of genetic predisposition for developing that specific dystonia? And uh, in line with that, the question is more precise. Is there a predisposition for maladaptive neuroplasticity? It comes from Gabriel Boulanger Sanson, who asked this question. So is there a genetic predisposition for that specific dystonia? and the predisposition for maladaptive neuroplasticity. Oh, probably, Marie, you, you could answer this question is more in your field than in mine. Both, both we can. <laughs> um, so at the moment, uh, there is little or no predisposition for task-specific dystonia. Also, we find, uh, for example, for a musician dystonia that uh, there may be several persons in the family having um, musician dystonia, that is task specific uh, dystonia. So it's it's often if there is predisposition or if it is related uh, to uh, the intense training. That uh, that's uh, is a question of uh, the combination of 
individual predisposition, much more than uh, genetics, and um, environmental factors, which are overtrained, hardworking, long hours, repetitive, very skilled, uh, highly demanding movements like musician or writing. So it's an interaction between um, person and task. The second point is, uh, is there a predisposition for maladaptive neuroplasticity? That we don't know yet, but we know, for example, that in Estonia, not specifically in Brightus Cram, if you uh, study what is called uh, temporal uh, discrimination or sensitive uh, discrimination, that is, you have two points on your finger and you have to tell uh, if they are uh, far away or close together, and how much you can differentiate uh, these uh, two points, these two pins on your finger. The poor of Estonia may have an abnormality of this discrimination, and uh, it was work by uh, Professor Richardson in Ireland, and they found that uh, first degrees related, that is uh, children or uh, brothers and sisters, may have uh, also an abnormality, although they don't have any Estonia. Uh, so that means that there may be a kind of fragility, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that having this fragility uh, will bring you immediately to have a, a dystonia. So that's very important. Um, so Audrey Caron asks, uh, how looks, uh, how looks the uh, appropriate pen and where can we find such a pen? Because you mentioned appropriate, oh. special pen. Oh, in my opinion, there is no very uh, specific pen for writer's scrum. Probably the most uh, uh, efficient pen is a long pen and a, a faceted uh, pen or pencil in order to place your finger on the, the face of the pen and maintain the, the end in the writer's position. The writer's position is uh, extension of the, the finger, not a, fl a flexion. But uh, I'm not sure there is a, uh, a good uh, uh, devices for writing. I, I, I don't find one. So now we, we, we move into uh, the question on rehabilitation because that's uh, at the core of the lecture. And there are several questions. The first one is how long it takes uh, with this rehabilitation? How long time will it take to the rehabilitation? Is it a few days, a few months, even more? And that was one question. And there is another one coming in. So maybe we start with that one. How long does it uh, last for the rehabilitation? And uh, concerning the duration of the rehabilitation, uh, it's, uh, in average, it's uh, between uh, four months to one year. But uh, if you want to succeed, you have to train a lot at home. The face-to-face -face with the physical therapist could be uh, once a week or once uh, each fortnight, but during this uh, space of time, you have to, to train a lot at home. And the second question was? The second question, you partially answered this question because I read it. Um, the exercise uh, during specific session, uh, do we have to do that on a daily basis? And how long do we have to train? A few minutes. Uh, and if we do that on a daily basis, we have to write also to do this exercise just before writing. Say you want to write a letter and you have to do this exercise just before. So oh. the question of uh, the frequency of this training, the duration of this uh, same training, and is it useful to do this uh, exercise of training just before writing? Yeah, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's better to have very frequent and short session during the day and uh, in a natural way to, uh, to draw a circle in uh, uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise in order to um, free the hand and to move your finger. The, the main uh, exercise for 
writing is to do with your finger uh, extend around, extend around is the bed writing. And you do that very frequently uh, at phone or when uh, looking uh, uh, on the computer. And when uh, for uh, uh, pen in hand, you draw, uh, you take the habits to move very freely your, your finger with the pen on the, on the paper. And it's good to start uh, uh, enfin, before starting writing, to move your hand and to have to uh, uh, warm up exercise in order to to start very relaxed. But the the one of the main points is to stay relaxed when writing and don't and avoid to be to focus writing. Thank you. Well, that's very accurate. Not tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so there are two questions about other treatments and uh, one question is uh, do we it's a question for both of us I think um, is there an interest in deep brain stimulation for writer's cramp that's the first question and the second one is uh, are there any data on neuromodulation like uh, TMS transcranial magnetic stimulation in writer's cramp so TMS transcranial magnetic stimulation in writer's cramp is it useful? What are the results? And uh, DBS, deep brain stimulation in writer's cramp, uh, is it necessary? Do we go to that extreme? Uh, I, I prefer you, <laughs> you answer okay. this, uh, this question because okay. it's more medical. Uh, for deep brain stimulation, uh, well, at the time, by the time being, uh, for writer's cramp per se, uh, as far as I can tell, there is no uh, patient, there are no patients has been operated with bilateral pineal stimulation just for writer's cramp, that is for isolated writer's cramp. If somebody has a generalized dystonia or a dystonia which is rather severe and involving the upper limbs in many tasks, including writing, they may need to have deep brain stimulation, but for the whole dystonia. And if it is only for writing, uh, it's very difficult because even in those patients with uh, a neck and upper limb and trunk dystonia who has upper limb dystonia, including right cramp, writing is the most difficult uh, disorder uh, and uh, task that can be improved. So it's difficult to get writing perfectly improved even with deep brain stimulation. So that's the first point. So the short answer for DBS for isolated writer's cramp as far as I know, there is no example, and that may be not that easy to get perfect handwriting after that. And as for TMS, TMS has been used mainly in research, uh, trying to modulate uh, the cortical response or even the cerebral uh, input to the cortex. And as both are uh, a little bit dysfunctional, uh, to date in research at least, the results were not too good and, uh, and, and transient. So it's not a treatment. Uh, if we do TMS, uh, repetitive TMS, like it was done in depression, for example, um, there are no example of uh, very uh, good results of that. So I, I would say that at, by the time being TMS um, will not be a um, uh, good approach for writer's cramp. Uh, there is one question that I will pass uh, to you, which is, uh, um, is there sim uh, are there similarities uh, between uh, musician that specific dystonia and writer's cramp? And if so, how we can preve prevent them? And if we can prevent them, is there a specific training or is there a specific way to avoid children to get uh, musician dystonia? It's uh, uh, it, musician cramp and writer's cramp uh, are uh, the same origin. Is uh, a uh, specific uh, is a star specific dystonia. Uh, nevertheless, uh, is uh, is easier, uh, less difficult uh, to treat uh, writer's cramp because. Uh, 
uh, it's possible to modify the the posture of the hand when writing is not often possible uh, with uh, a music instrument because it's uh, it's very uh, conventional. You can modify it. Uh, and the, the second part, um, um, so it is uh, the, probably the same origin, uh, writer's cramp, musician cramp, and the other uh, tax specific dystonia. Concerning the prevention, a uh, few years ago, we tried to find if there is some uh, uh, sign, a previous sign of a uh, writer's cramp. Uh, and we study uh, the, the writing uh, corpus of a patient with a, a writer's cramp, and we observe the, the corpus one year before the, the, occur, the, the dystonia occurred, and five years before, and we don't, we don't find any sign of dystonia before the, the dystonia. And it's very difficult to say if there is a prevention of uh, the dystonia uh, posture. Uh, because uh, even though if you have a good, uh, perfect uh, uh, position of the hand when writing, you, you may have a, a, a writing cramp. And some other with a very bad posture when writing don't, don't have any uh, 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 never uh, have a, a, a dystonia. So uh, uh, I'm not sure it's possible to prevent uh, the, uh, the, the occurring of, of the of, of writer's cramp. What is your piece of advice, uh, Marie? Well, uh, I, I fully agree with what you said. Uh, my advice would be in line with uh, one of the comments and questions that I had both in the chat and also on the question list, uh, which is, um, well, the triggering factor is uh, this uh, uh, intense and prolonged exercise or this very, very complex and highly tuned movement. So um, the question was, uh, are the teacher aware of that? And the teachers uh, for writing, I mean, the, the teacher for school children are now more and more aware of that and can detect that, some of them. And uh, in, uh, I don't know the name, in, in music schools, um, also now people become more and more aware and also in orchestras, even in professional orchestras and these uh, patients with uh, musicians, dystonia are referred. And uh, for children, uh, they are trained with less intense training and uh, the same with musicians. So they change the way they teach uh, the instrument. And on top of that, uh, there is something that probably Mozart would not never had uh, musician dystonia because if you start music before the age of seven, the risk factor of having musician dystonia is uh, uh, smaller than if you start after. Uh, but uh, not everybody starts music uh, before the age of seven. Uh, that will be my answer. Just, I would, I would like to add something. Uh, since uh, the computer is more used, we see less uh, writer's cramp uh, than we used to see uh, uh, 10 or 20 years ago. And probably, if you diminish the quantity of uh, handwriting gesture, you diminish the risk of uh, having a, a writer's cramp. But for the musician, it's impossible to reduce the quantity of training. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, uh, there is one question which is also very interest interesting from Audrey Caron. And Audrey Caron asks, uh, if we don't have a close to our place, a rehabilitation specialist, can we go to an ergotherapist beforehand in order to know what a good ergonomic writing position looks or feel like because we don't quite remember it. So what is uh, uh, well, what what the ergotherapist can do uh, at the time with uh, writer's cramp? Oh, it, I very agree with ergotherapy and uh, the uh, ergotherapy. Uh, uh, it, the problem is not uh, 
which uh, uh, rehabilitative workers will treat uh, the, the, the patients with writer's companies, how to, to treat it, but ergotherapy or speech therapy or physical therapy could be good, or graphotherapies too. And uh, I, I don't uh, hear the other part of the question. Uh, no, there is no other part of that question, but there is other. About the posture, the quality of the posture. Yeah, the quality of the posture, to, I mean, to, to show what was the, the more ergonomic posture that is like to uh, really earn the most ergonomic posture. Yes. Uh, it's difficult to say. There, there is not um, an evidence uh, between uh, the quality of the posture or the bad, bad posture on the writer's cramp. Um, uh, probably it's uh, uh, it's uh, 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 I, I look for the word it's uh, uh, just a context uh, but it, it could be a uh, the way to start uh, the dystonia, but uh, uh, the dystonia, uh, 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 excuse me, I, I walk for the, uh, it's, uh, there is a, a, a kind of susceptibility of to, to have the, gist, the dystonia. Um, if you have a bad posture, the connection with both posture on the susceptibility uh, uh, do the, the writer's scrap. That's very clear. Yeah. Um, well, there is, uh, in, in line with that, uh, there is a few questions on the power of the mind over the body. Uh, that's a philosophical question, but not, not a lot. Uh, I give you two examples. One person says, when, when I try to write, I have a writer's cramp, but if my mind is wandering and I think of something else, um, it's, I, I, my, my writing is, uh, is better or easier. So uh, what about distraction and uh, writing? That's what first. And about distraction and in line with that, one question is asking, uh, is there any benefit from hypnosis? Uh for the first question, it's uh, very clear that you focus your attention on your hand, you increase your dystonia. One way for reducing uh, the one way for reducing uh, the severity of your uh, handwriting dystonia is to uh, uh, have a, a calm attention on writing on turn your uh, your attention on uh, other objective. So uh, frequently, I, I use I I ask the patient to close the eyes and to focus uh, his or her attention on the relaxation of the hand when writing and to feel uh, the the comfortable uh, feeling of the hand moving on the paper. If you don't. If you don't have a, a, a too strong to to severe attention of, of your hand, your your writer's cramp reduces. And for the second question was uh, well, the second question was about uh, the benefit of hypnosis. Oh, oh yes, it's probably it's a good way for. Uh, uh, gain, uh, regain uh, relaxation and to have a positive image on uh, the writer's comp because uh, the, uh, the, the self-image of people suffering from writer's comp is very bad and to uh, have a, a better image of, of, of themselves is, is probably a good way and this is a good indication. Thank you. And uh, I have two questions that go together. Uh, it's about the clinical diversity of, uh, of dystonia, of that specific dystonia. And there is one gentleman, I think the gentleman who said, uh, my problem is not exactly on my fingers, but in the muscle between the wrist and the elbow. And uh, this gentleman asked, uh, is it the same problem? 
And the second question is, uh, is YIP, for those who play golf, I don't, so YIP is yeah. kind of a tremor when you're just putting, when you have pushed the, the ball to the, to the hole uh, at the very last uh, end of the, of the game, uh, is putting a task-specific Estonia. So okay. one is, uh, uh, if we have uh, Estonia of the wrist and, uh, and uh, elbow, is it still uh, Estonia? And is it, same, yeah, well, yeah. Is it, uh, is it a dystonia to have an elbow on the wrist? I, I, yeah, not clear. The question is, uh, well, right in front, you showed most of the examples where with uh, hand dystonia and fingers dystonia. So this gentleman or this lady has more of a, a wrist uh, 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 and uh, arm dystonia. Yes, there is, it's Is possible it? to have a yes. It's possible to have a dystonia of the of the proximal part of the upper limb, shoulder, uh, elbow, uh, forearm. Uh, depends the way to uh, to move. And it's very frequent to have a pronation of the forearm, the rota the, uh, the internal rotation when writing. And frequently uh, we have to. Reduce uh, this uh, uh, this movement in order to restore the uh, to restore the writing. On concerning the golf, it's a uh, it's a very uh, uh, well known uh, dystonia in sport. Uh, there are few dystonia in sport, but uh, hip uh, is very frequent and. Uh, I don't have uh, the experience uh, of rehabilitation in this uh, in this case. Maybe have you some uh, idea of? Uh... Uh, well, um, I don't have personal ideas, but I remember attending at Movement Disorder Society a full session on uh, golf players' dystonias with an S. Uh, it was almost Chinese to me, but uh, uh, they insisted on that tip. That seems a big problem, including in. Uh, uh, very good players and even champion. And uh, what I understood from this lecture that it was very difficult to treat and uh, rehabilitation didn't help much. But it's a task specific Estonia, a very, very specific task specific Estonia. Yeah. And uh, the very last question is the look alike um, uh, that is the things that may be taken for the Estonia uh, but are not the Estonia. And, uh, uh, that's a confusion in, in, uh, in diagnosis. So um, I try to find that. Is there a mix up with carpal uh, canal, carpal, carpal tunnel, by the way, carpal canal disease? That is the one who have an entrapment of their median nerve. Uh, oh, yeah. the level. And uh, is there uh, something similar, or can it be the same disease, or different disease, or completely different disease? In your opinion, it's completely a different disease, no? Yeah, well, it's, it's completely different disease, and uh, uh, that's. Uh, but sometimes people are referred because they have pain when writing, or they don't feel well the, the fingers when writing, and um, these people are referred with a suspicion of dystonia. But uh, it's very important when you see a doctor or a physiotherapist or ergotherapist to have a, a, a full uh, neurological or muscle or motor examination to make sure that there is no sensory disturbances, no real sensory disturbances, yeah. you don't feel keen, and no motor disorders, that is uh, no loss of strength and uh, no wasting. Uh, loss of muscles of, uh, of your hand muscles. If any of those exist, first you go for another disease and, uh, and a few times people will refer to me uh, for writing difficulties and have weakness of the hands or sensory loss and that was something very different from writer's cramp, although it looked like uh, a writer's cramp initially. But clinical examination and also how the person describes uh, the travel is very important to listen carefully to the person who complains of uh, difficulty writing. Sometimes they give the solution and they have the solution without knowing. And there is a very last question, which is for you. Uh, do you know <laughs> in French or English talking about task-specific dystonia 
And do you think that uh, it could be useful for research purposes? And that Gabriel Boulanger Sanson, who sent a lot of questions. And, um, and so that will be a way to talk about everything you did, wrote, and will do. I, I, I couldn't uh, hear you uh, clearly oh, because there is an echo. Uh, yeah. an echo because I'm too close to the computer. So the question is, uh, do you have books or papers uh, talking about task-specific dystonia and can uh, we use them for uh, research purposes? A book? Book on, on task-specific dystonia. Uh, there, 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 we, I written a, a book on, on this subject, but uh, is uh, is out of uh, is, uh, we is is not published yet, uh, unfortunately. And there it has to be written <laughs> a book. <laughs> That's for your next holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know if we have still time for questions. Uh, I have a lot of people saying uh, thank you. They are very enthusiastic. Uh, and uh, I cannot read all the compliments that you got. Uh, I think uh, we reached uh, more than 35 people joining. And they were all thank you. Uh, very nice, uh, useful, and so on. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, bienvenue. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Superb, uh, and so on. So I think I cannot say more. I do. <laughs> not I have one question, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, are the um, botulin, botulin toxin injections automatic for a waiter scrump? Uh, I mean, uh, is it possible to treat the white house cramp only with uh, rehabilitation? Oh yes, it is possible. Uh, depends the, the if the the it's my opinion. We will discuss with Marie Ma Vidaille later. But uh, if the uh, movement is very complex, it's difficult to to find which are the uh, the specific muscle to enhance. And it's frequently better to start with the rehabilitation uh, alone. But uh, but uh, when you find uh, the target, the, the specific muscle uh, who disorganize the movement, it's very good to use a botulinum toxin injection. And uh, the two options could be. Uh, uh, use in unison or separately one on the other depend if the movement is is, um, uh, is very complex uh, then it's better to to trade by uh, rehabilitation and if the movement is very focal and if you see well uh, the, the muscle or the muscles involved uh, it could be used to to, to use the botulinum toxin. But it is good, even though you reduce the tone of the dystonic muscle to uh, reentrain it, to, uh, to stimulate uh, the, the good motion in order to play on the neuroplasticity of the brain. Okay, thanks. And Marie, may I have uh, uh, an, an idea about Botulinum toxin. Of my point. Um, well, I agree with you. I think uh, if uh, if I take one example, I will refer first uh, the person to a physiotherapist in order that he has uh, a proper retraining. And uh, if there is no physiotherapist available uh, to the associations, because uh, uh, Dysonia Europe, I'm at least, uh, they have. Uh, a small uh, video that they can provide and you can train or some advice that you can use to do your self-retraining. So that's the very first thing, because uh, uh, if we don't do that first uh, and then do go right away to put in toxin, we will blur the picture and it will be much more difficult for the physiotherapist to work later on. 
Uh, it's also very important to have somebody that analyzed independently the movement because uh, it's a, it's a as you as you saw there uh, it's a kind of a cross talk between the two uh, people trying to take care of the patient or the person and uh, the physiotherapist we say okay that may be the wrist flexion and say okay we will inject inject the wrist muscles and so. And then when the toxin is done, uh, you have back to the physiotherapy, you say, okay, but this muscle was not ejected and you may add that one to uh, your uh, next uh, uh, session. And uh, with that, it's very difficult. It's one of the most difficult dystonia to treat with botulinum toxin because it's, uh, it's related to the most refined function uh, of a human being, how to write. The second more refined is how to to talk and it's not easy also for white right, voice uh, disturbances and the upper one with that never rehabilitated is how to think. Uh, but uh, besides that joke, uh, it's difficult because uh, uh, not only the hand is useful for writing, but it's useful for every uh, movement of the everyday life. So you have to repair or uh, at least improve the function of writing without disturbing other function like eating, brushing your teeth and so on and so on. So we try to inject small doses on a few muscles with controlled EMG and if we can ultrasound in order to be very, very focused and to uh, target the proper muscle and reevaluate. Re and then we may be finished because I see that Adam uh, probably moves to say that uh, uh, we are over time. And uh, that's, uh, that's the reason why we are over time is because we are very enthusiastic and we don't want to leave you. And the last word would be to Jean-Pierre uh -huh. and Adam. I just think uh, that you are tired and you want to take a rest. So I care about you, <laughs> not about the time. No, but uh, uh, summarizing, I think uh, we have answered, yeah? All the questions, anyway. So. Is that right? I think so. Uh, if uh, if there is a burning question, please write it down very very quickly, and uh, we can answer I one. I one bonus question. Bonus question. <laughs> okay. One of the burning questions is one of the most difficult one. Uh, can, uh, well, I don't even know the answer. Uh, can the disturbed part of the brain go back to normal with rehabilitation? Or simply during the rehabilitation, the patient are learning new different movements? Uh, it's not clear, excuse me, I, I have difficulty to hear you. And, uh, so the question is, oh. is very complex. It's, so we take the one which is easier is during rehabilitation, the patient are learning new different movements. Uh, are they learning new different movements during rehabilitation? Uh, usually you have a specific program, uh, a very specific. Uh, I try to show you uh, the, the program for a patient, you have to have a specific movement. Each patient has his own specific movement of rehabilitation. And uh, uh, is there a the, the question? Is the question is that? Mm -hmm. the, yeah. And uh, you observe the disorganization, disorganization of the movement, and you try to uh, modify the the posture of the hand when writing in order to, in order to reduce uh, uh, the bad activity, uh, the harmful activity of the dystonic muscle. If uh, the, if the flexor, uh, the long flexor are, are too active, you try to extend the finger in order to um, to use other other finger and to modify the way to hold the pain. Uh, all the exercises for each patient are very specific in order to uh, eliminate uh, the dystonic muscle when moving the hand uh, on writing. 
Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Well done. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. It's like it's like we we, we feel that we we, we need uh, something like two, three, four hours of discussion. It's so fascinating. Thanks a lot. <laughs> 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 Thanks a lot, Dr. Uh, Vleton and Professor Vidae for uh, uh, tonight. I, it was, was uh, a pleasure to so great. be with you. It was a challenge. Yeah, yeah, I believe. Uh, okay, so I want to thank you, Dr. Jean-Pierre and Professor Marie, for sharing part of your evening with us. Uh, we are very grateful for your uh, to you for your work and support, uh, not only today but uh, for many years uh, of supporting the Estonia Europe and the Estonia community. And I hope that we will uh, cooperate in until we will find a cure. <laughs> and, and, and not we, maybe not we, the, the researchers or scientists. Uh, Thank you, Edvish, and the whole Estonia Europe team for their work. And uh, thank you, thank Amadis, France, for cooperation. Uh, we appreciate that very well. And I also want to thank very much to our partners who have been supporting us to facilitate this uh, project. Uh, I want to inform our attendees that a recorded version of this webinar uh, will be available on the Estonia Europe YouTube uh, channel and uh, Facebook. So if you want to watch it uh, or uh, share it with others, please uh, follow our social media. Uh, you can visit our uh, website where you can find uh, links to all our social media channels. Uh, so you can see our website address here. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to come to this webinar and we look forward uh, to having you at the next <laughs> webinar in April. <laughs> I, 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 I mean the attendees, maybe not necessary panelists in uh, the same panels in April. Uh, we will talk probably about the DBS uh, for the next time in April. So I invite. Uh, thank you very much and have a good evening. You thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you, Marie. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>